asking that um, individual, what is their role? What's their goal? What makes them unique? What makes them different? And how can defining uh, a clear personal brand really help to amplify them, showcase them, highlight them, make them stand out? Everyone. Welcome to another episode of Women Worldwide. Thank you so much for tuning in, for showing up, and for always sharing. We appreciate that you're here with us and your time, especially when things are so many things are going on in our world. So remember to always share because the more you share, we can bring the guests who can give the advice <laughs> that you're looking for. All right, I want to get right to today's topic and special guests because there are actually two of them today. <laughs> uh, the topic is the personal brand. And how do you go about finding your style and your presence and bringing out the real you? Uh, where do you start and who can help you? Well, that's where my guest today can actually help. So joining me on the show are Alyssa Peak. And Alyssa is a virtual presence coach and a headshot photographer. Now, a lot of her work you see on websites and in profiles and in marketing materials, but her expertise has led to branding photography that you can see in Times Square <laughs> in New York and at subway bus stops and in subway stations. And also on the show is Tanya Sterl. Now, Tanya is the founder of Sterl on Style, and she's a personal style and image coach who really helps women to amplify their style. And that's everything from, think, red carpet to TEDx talks. I could go on and on about these ladies, but I think it's time that they share their journey and their advice with you. So ladies, welcome. Welcome to Women Worldwide. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Happy to be here. Oh, well, I'm happy to have you here. Uh, the personal brand, you know, there's a, there's a lot of importance that goes around the brand, the image, and the style. And I always like to start the show, and I'd love to hear from both of you, maybe starting with you, Alyssa, on how did you sort of go down this path to help women capture the personal brand and their style? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I spent 23 years in the fashion industry in all different roles and I lost my job and I had to really think about what is was going to speak to me and what my passion was. And it was photography. And when I really started studying photography and glamour photography, I saw these amazing transformations happening to these women inside as much as outside. And for me, I just realized that, you know, as a woman in my 40s at the time, there were women over 40 were doing these amazing things. They're unstoppable. They're starting businesses. They keep going. They want to increase their revenues. Yet they're, at the same time, they're running away from the camera because of they're afraid to look old. They're not at the perfect weight and all those things that hold us back. So I really wanted to merge the two, help the women succeed and as they're running away from the camera and create this safe space for them. So which is why I really focus on women over 40 um, and just making them, it's really for me from the inside out, it's really having them really accept themselves at this age and 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 wait or whatever it is that you could think is holding them back. and show it to the world. That's awesome. This, the safe space in front of the camera. I mean, I think that's a diff, that's difficult. It really yeah. is. So it, it's great to hear that you're doing that and you're helping women over 40. How about you, Tanya? How'd you get to where you are? Yeah, well, that's a fun fact about Alyssa and myself. We both come from the fashion industry, though we didn't meet each other then uh, until after we launched our businesses. So I worked as a fashion designer for 18 years. And I like to say I have this love-hate relationship with the fashion industry. <laughs> love, the fantasy, <laughs> love the runway. Um, but I really wanted to make fashion make sense for the real working woman. And I saw this disconnect between, you know, the high fashion and the real working woman. And I really, um, I'm really anchored in, you know, my drive around fashion and style for the confidence it gives a woman. And so... 
at the height of my um, you know, tenure in fashion design, I had the option to go on to be design director for a huge brand name or go off on my own to become a personal stylist. And I was working at trunk shows with the collection I was designing. Um, the collection I was designing for at the time, we would dress women like Deborah Norville and Inside Edition, the Fox News team, um, and really seeing clothing as that tool to give women confidence. So it's when I started to show up at trunk shows, um, got, got out from back behind the scenes of fashion design, and was working one-on-one -on -one with women, styling them from head to toe, and just seeing that transformation that would happen when they're in the right color, the right cut, the right look, the right attitude from head to toe. So that was a huge uh, turning point for me in 2013, launched my personal styling business, and it's been so much more rewarding. It's so interesting. You both have different backgrounds, but yet you complement one another so much. How did you actually meet and, and form your relationship? We, we met at one of the very first networking events I went to when I started my business and we chatted and we didn't really necessarily keep in touch, but I think after that we kept showing up at the same events over and over and over. And then we started referring business to each other. So Tanya styles some of my clients or so, and then I refer my clients to Tanya sometimes after a shoot. Um, and then finally, I think it's Tanya, you said to me last year, it was just actually December, 2018, I guess. And why are, you know, we were literally talking to the same woman, like on paper and the little same woman in the room. And it was just like kind of a no brainer that we would just kind of work closer together and promote each other. Oh, that's yeah. great. The universe brought you together. <laughs> nice Absolutely. Time. And I might add, I met a lot of photographers over the seven years of my business and Alyssa's approach of how she gets women to be comfortable on camera brings out their energy. She has a, an approach like no other photographer I've met or worked with in the last six, seven years. So oh, that's great to hear. My number one. <laughs> wow, what an endorsement. So let's talk a little bit about the importance of the personal brand. What would you say to, and I want to hear from both of you, what would you say to somebody who is reluctant about bringing out their style or who just doesn't see the importance of that. So Tanya, let's start with you. Yeah, well, it's interesting because both Alyssa and I have a very uh, similar approach when we first meet or start with a client, whether it's uh, working with a client together or individually. Um, and it's really about asking that um, individual, what is their role? What's their goal? What makes them unique? What makes them different? And how can defining uh, a clear personal brand really help to amplify them, showcase them, highlight them, make them stand out. So it's really about helping them to de define their own personal brand, what makes them unique, what makes them stand out, what makes them different. Um, I work with women in similar industries and want to make sure that there's something about their uniqueness that is brought out through their style, their color palette, um, because really, ultimately, your style, what you're wearing, your clothing, is a communication tool. Absolutely. It's saying who and how you are um, before you even speak. And it's, it's, I always like to say, like, birds have feathers, animals have fur, but we have clothing. We get to choose what our second skin is. And well, we can you're really. <laughs> we express ourselves and really um, show up and show people who and how we are. Okay, so Tanya, your, your work begins with drawing out that, that style and having that clarity. And once they have that, so now I'm going to flip it to you, Alyssa. If they have the style and they're feeling good, is your work, um, do you then sort of put them in front of the camera to see how they do? Where do you pick up on that? Sure. So um, first of all, I always start with understanding, like Tanya said, what is it they want to project? What is the message they want? How do they want to be seen? And a perfect example is if someone is wants to be, let's say, CEO, but they're not there yet, they have to show up looking like the CEO. So it's almost like uh, the secret, right? You have to yeah. you have to see where you're going five to five uh, years down the road. It's but for process. me, 
Yeah. And the way I work is, is really inside out. So I could, I could always say I can have a client in the most beautiful outfit and hair and makeup if she doesn't know how to bring out of her her true essence, which is how I, what I call coach through the camera, I coach through the camera to get her to a, show me what that looks like to be confident. Show me what it looks like to be a leader. Show me what it looks like to be you know, a, a listener if you're a therapist. Show me what that is. And it's the connection that they get to. I always say my camera is just the portal to their target audience. Do right? you pick their setting, Alyssa? So, so when you say I, uh, yeah, we talk about it. So we do a Zoom call, which I've been doing for a few years, like before the shoot, we get on a Zoom, we talk about it. Um, most of the time it's in a studio with a plain backdrop because it doesn't need to be too complicated. But at the same time, um, I've done out on the street and in, in breather.com spaces, like many, many apartments, but mostly it's this image that they need that they could put on their bio, that could put on their website, that they can pass when they're doing speaking gigs. Um, it's going on their book cover. It's going on their mm -hmm. banners. So there is the lifestyle shoot, but mostly these people need this photo that is going to be their business card, basically. Yeah. You know, and I think, you know, kind of what Tanya was saying, what we do together is, or individually and together, is visual storytelling. Your outfit is telling a story. Your posture is telling a story. Your smile is telling a story. Your eye contact, and it's putting it all together. Because without that, if you don't have any of that, you know, you, you're just, I had a client tell me her new picture. I love this quote. Um, her old picture showed what she looked like. Her new picture shows who she is and what she brings to the table. Oh, I love and that. And I think that's really, really the goal. It's not about what you look like. It's about getting a sense of who you are and what you can do for your clients. So Tanya, are you, I, I would imagine that because Alyssa is the, you know, show me, and we talked a little bit about the setting, you would probably have to collaborate with Alyssa on the colors and what, what to wear and how that is brought out through the camera and the setting. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the beauty of working with Alyssa because Alyssa is also a fine artist. She has her background in fashion. I'm also have a background in um, art and drawing, painting, color theory, color analysis. Oh, I love it. Um, my fashion design background gives me that eye for like fit, v-neck, silhouette, um, embodiment. So it, it really is about listening to that woman's individual story and how can I paint her picture, but with clothing. So there is an art to choosing that color palette that's going to enhance her, her look based on her hair, eye color, skin tones, but also colors and energy. Hmm. So what energy does she want to bring forth? Like you'll always see me in like bright, vibrant colors because I'm like this energetic um, person, but if to Alyssa's point, if it's a therapist and they're a listener, maybe the color palette is more cool and soothing. Um, but it also depends on the personality. I have three clients that are all divorce lawyers, and you would think, oh, navy suit. Yet each one of them has a little bit different approach to their work. The mediator is the grounding one, so I put her in earthy colors. The other one's got bright red hair and is really curvy and sassy, so we put her in bright colors. Um, so it really is composing and putting together the accessories, the jewelry, the colors, the clothing that are going to speak to their individual story. And their yeah, and I'll, just, really I'll just add to that. So, you know, Tanya really does head to toe, right? She will, you know, in like from clothing to coats, if possible, from a handbag to shoes. So when we work together, it's really about what's going to be on this frame. So when we have a client, you know, she has an app that she uses and we can share what's in the woman's closet and we discuss oh, together. Um, oh, you know, she'll put the outfits together and I'll say, well, I think this one's good for photography. That one's good for photography or that neckline. No, or that puffy sleeve. No. Um, and we That's discuss so it. Right, so and what is the Seinfeld episode <laughs> between the two of us? I'm sorry, the puffy sleeve reminds me of a Seinfeld episode. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if you saw, right, do you remember that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's no pirate charge. Yes, yes. But there is this, uh, there is a collaboration that we do together to make sure that we have the same goal. And I, as a, and she does have an eye as well, but from my eye, knowing how the camera works, knowing how the lens works, knowing that it's gonna, you know, so we, um. 
Anyway, at the end of the day, and I have photos, I'm like, which one do you like better? This one or this one for the client? So we help nice each to other. be able to work together yeah. that way. Yeah. That's yeah. really good. So, I mean, there's so much success in, in what you're doing and what you're drawing out. Um, now, I know the, the Women Worldwide audience also, they have challenges and maybe you have challenges too. <laughs> so as entrepreneurs, what are maybe, what's one of your challenges? Tanya, let's, let's start with you sharing. <laughs> Um, I think it's interesting because I'm going into seven year of business, seven year, my seventh year of business. Um, I think the biggest challenge was just having the confidence to resign from my 18 years as a fashion designer and it's be hard. Brave and bold enough <laughs> to launch my own business. So I think that was challenge number one. Um, and year one is a challenge. If you can survive year one, any women out there listening, um, especially as Alyssa mentioned, women over 40, I made the leap, I turned 41, I'm 48 now, um, is it listening to your gut, knowing what serves you next, knowing what's not serving you anymore. I was getting a little burnt out yeah. from the fashion industry. Um, so I think if you can get through and over that pivot or change or challenge, and if you can't do it alone, reach out to a career coach, reach out to um, a guide, reach out to a coach to help you through it. I actually threw myself into this 14 week women's transformation program to be able to formulate oh, my new business yeah, with the support of 14 women with a facilitator because I had this idea for the personal styling business, um, but really needed the support and the encouragement. Um, and each year it's a challenge. We, we, each year we have to grow our brands, grow our influence, um, do more speak engagements, more interviews like this, and just keep reaching a, a bigger audience. Right, walk the talk. How about you, Alyssa, as an entrepreneur, challenges? I think the challenge is, uh, what is it, what I would say? I would say the challenge is to keep going, you know, because it's hard to do everything. Mm -hmm. um, not that you have to do everything, but most entrepreneurs, we like to do so much on our own and it's, everything's on your shoulders, you know? But I think that, I think what gets me up and out of the, every day is I know I'm making a difference in people's lives, right? So I'm not selling them a photo shoot. I'm selling them an opportunity for the world, for them to get their message out to the world. And I think if we keep focusing on that and, you know, my one advice for anyone who wants to start a business is, I always say it, tell every single person you ever breathe on what you're doing because you have to be your own biggest advocate. That's right. And, and I think that I know like with social media, oh, it's so boasting, you know, but if I don't tell people what I'm doing, like in COVID, I totally transformed. I couldn't do photo shoots. So I've now virtual presence coaching and I've been coaching clients all over the country now. So that became a brand new opportunity of how do you show online? How do you lead over the, the computer? How, what is, how are you presenting yourself with your energy and your posture, just like in a photo shoot? So, you know, it's, it's constantly uh, pivoting and moving. Right. We're in a more. different time. Yeah. So that, that's really good that you were able to sort of position as the virtual presence and to help people. I have to remember this is still a camera, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. not your and We all have our backgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like like being on our own things. mini TV show. Well, that's what I, you know, I teach that. Like, this is what you have to do. You have to pretend it's your show, set up your lighting and your camera and your background. And then, and then it's then what, right? So after right. you have all that, I really teach on the confidence and presence part in the community. That's great. Well, I do a lot of media training, so I can relate to what you're saying because that's now incorporating the energy that comes through, right, on the, the Zoom interviews and certainly what you're wearing and how you show up. I was going to say, Tanya, to how you look. <laughs> I know we call it hashtag Zoom tops. Uh, yes. Showtime, right? You got to have your outfits ready for showtime. <laughs> exactly. So maybe you can each share um, an, an uh oh or an aha learning moment that's really stuck with you on your journey that you think might help somebody else. So, Alyssa, how about your either uh-oh or aha? Uh I would say my uh-oh is sometimes you, you, know, you want to collaborate with everyone 
And I think I learned um, to do a little bit more research on people that I'm collaborating with Ooh. and that maybe um, their one. message and my message don't really go together. And I think when I was very early on in my career, I was kind of like grabbing and, oh yeah, I'll collaborate, I'll collaborate, I'll collaborate. But the messaging wasn't right or the yeah. audience wasn't right. And I think in hindsight, not that it hurt my business, it absolutely did not hurt my business, but maybe I could have taken that energy and used it a little bit more wisely. That's interesting because that is actually a big part of your brand who you align to. So mm -hmm. learning that lesson is so important. Tanya, how about you? Uh-oh moment, aha moment. I think, my, I think I'm gonna speak to the aha moment um, because when I launched my personal styling business, all the like business coaches and business school said, well, look at what your competition is doing. And I said, you know what, actually, no, I need to shut off the noise. I need to go get quiet cool. and go deep into why I do what I do. And it's not about the trend. It's not about the color. It's, it's about really seeing that woman, seeing her essence showing her what she doesn't see and also like advancing women in the workplace, advancing women into leadership positions. So which we as a personal, <laughs> yes, yes. Cause as a personal stylist, Oh, you're a stylist. So are you a celebrity stylist? Oh, do you, are you a personal shopper? You just shop for really rich women, right? There's all these yeah. different connotations when you say personal stylist. So I had to get very clear and quiet with myself and my aha moment was, who is this woman that I'm really passionate about styling? And it's the woman using her influence for greater good. It's a woman who needs clothing to give her the confidence to go for her goals. So I think my aha moment and you know, for my tip for, for those listening is, instead of grasping at the competition, oh, what are all the other stylists doing or marketing people or lawyers? Don't look at the competition. Really get quiet with yourself. Why are you doing what you're doing? And develop your own process with it. My process is very different from other stylists. I've had clients say, wow, a stylist has never asked me that question. You're, you're really intuitive. You're really observant, right? These details about how you want to move, flow, and feel. So I think the aha moment was actually don't look at the competition. <laughs> Get really quiet with yourself, with your own process and your own reason why you do the work you do and who is that target audience you're really working with and speaking to. Yeah, I would just want to piggyback on that to say like, as a photographer, to, to Tanya's point, like I'm not a family photographer, I'm not a maternity photographer, I'm not a baby photographer, I'm not a product photographer. And I get calls for those things and maybe you know, occasionally I'll do a family shoot but I, I'm not those things. I am a, I am a photographer, what you are. especially for women over 40. I do photograph women under 40. I do photograph men, um, but I market to my women over 40. I'm very clear. I've never veered in the seven years. This is, this is who I am. And speaking of personal brand, I think Tanya and I are just so clear on who our target <laughs> audience is. You guys are on brand. <laughs> that is our brand. It really is. And we really don't, I mean, I also am an artist and I have a separate company that's an artist, but when it comes to people, it's not babies, it's not families, it's not bar mitzvahs, it's not weddings. It's, it's, it's to get women in leadership roles. Excellent. To be that's what it is. No, that's great. You're, you're so on point. I think it's really important to know who you are, what you're about, so that you can show it and share it. And you're, you're actually showing people the essence of what they can do as well, which is really nice. <laughs> so it's a part of your world. These are the amazing transformations and the transformations again are not outside. Yes, you have the new clothes and yes, you have the hair and makeup done, but the two of us individually, because we work separately and we sure. collaborate, but both of our work is internal transformation of making yeah. a woman see herself in a way that she hasn't seen in a really long time, if ever and letting her know that she is beautiful and powerful and confident. And, and that's, that's what we're selling, self-confidence. 
And I think that's why Alyssa and I are so passionate about the women over 40. I remember within one week being at two different events, hearing two different women over 50 say, oh, after 50, you become invisible. And it it pained me and made me so sad and angry. And I said, no woman over 40, 50, 60, 70. Alyssa and I have clients in their 70s. They're traveling the world. They're funky. They're like active. And I think women go through more profound changes at 50, 40, 50, 60, 70. And so it's it's just what you said, highlighting what makes it amazing. That's awesome. This is the the roundup advice question. So very quickly, each one of you, and we'll start with you, Tanya. What's your quick advice to women worldwide listeners on how they should view their personal brand? Yeah. Again, it goes back to asking yourself what makes you unique. I like to use these two words, actually. It's what will make you magnetic Mm. and memorable. Nice. So think of your personal brand as what makes you unique, what makes you stand out. And then in terms of beyond the first impression, how will you be remembered? The woman with the fabulous glasses, the woman with the gray hair, um, you know, the, the woman with the fabulous braids, like whatever that signature is, whatever makes you different, just embrace that and have, have that stand out and be your personal brand uh, signature and use it to be seen and connect and, and remember vibrant. <laughs> awesome. How about you, Alyssa? I think it's visual storytelling, right? So everything, and I, I do this now on the virtual presence, like everything in your background, I have a curated background. It's the telling a story. Every single thing here tells a story, sublimit- it tells a real story, but subliminally you get like organized and, you know, you can pick it apart. But I think it's about what, for visual, it's what's on the frame and what's in the photo. You're telling a story with your posture. You're telling a story with your smile. You're telling a story with your eyes. And that's why, you know, you change every three years. You, the look in your eyes changes. Your goals change. And I think it's important to update those photos because the worst thing is to have a photo that you're using to represent who you are that doesn't represent who you are. Right. Yeah. So it, you know, when I see the disconnect of mm-hmm. I'll see people I know and see a photo that like, wow, but I know she's this powerful, amazing, magnetic person. Why does she have this photo that she looks unhappy and outdated? Right. So it's really the messaging. The messaging has to be updated and has to be consistent and has to be engaging because virtual presence is also your headshot, right? You are not right. virtually there, but the goal is to make a connection. The goal is to say, I see your picture and I want to I want to know you. I want to grab you. I want to bring you into my life. So it's all, you know, virtual presence. I've realized I've been using the term since mid-March, but I've been doing it for seven years. <laughs> for online image, is this a virtual presence? Exactly. Oh, great advice. <laughs> Thank you both so much. Last question to each of you. Um, and we'll start with you, Tanya. Where can people find out more about you and your work? Yeah, so really it just starts with a consultation call. Um, you can book it through my website, uh, sterlonstyle.com, and you can follow my tips. I always like to give relevant tips uh, for women over 40 in terms of their style. I'm on Instagram, at sterlonstyle, and I invite you to connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, at Tanya Sterl. Um, but really it's at Sterlon style and it just starts with a conversation, book a consultation call and we can take it from there. Excellent. Alyssa, where can they find you? Uh, AlyssaPeak.com. Um, and then, and that one address, you can find out about my headshot work. You can find out about my artwork. You can find about uh, my virtual presence coaching. So it's a one-stop shop. Um, and then on Facebook, Instagram, um, LinkedIn, of course, at Alyssa Peak. Um, at LinkedIn, but always on Facebook, Instagram under Peak Photography or Alyssa Peak. Terrific. But, Ladies, yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show, for sharing a bit about your journeys and also just all the advice it was really, really helpful. So thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank it was such a pleasure. <laughs> You're welcome. And thank you to all of you for tuning into Women Worldwide. Please keep your feedback 
coming. You can always tweet me. I'm at Dee Breckenridge or even email me, Deirdre at pureperformancecom with two M's dot com. We always love to hear from you. So for now, friends, until our next episode, stay healthy, focused, energized, and feeling empowered.